All right, let's get some practice writing functions with return values and arguments. We'll have a couple of these challenges or code alongs. It's up to you how you want to treat them. If you want to attempt to write the function on your own, I highly recommend that approach. But if you are completely new to functions and you're a little overwhelmed, then maybe take a step back, follow along with me, and revisit these later on. So here's the first one. There's some description, some text I wrote. You can download this if you want and write your own function without looking at my solution. The goal is to write a function called isValidPassword, and it accepts two different arguments, a password and a username, and you can assume both of them are strings. And this function should return true or false. It's a Boolean method. If the password meets all of the requirements, which we'll go into in a moment, it should return true. If any of them fail, then it should not be valid, so we return false. So the password needs to be at least eight characters, it cannot contain any spaces, and it cannot contain the username. So if my username is doglover, which is what I have here, this is an invalid password. It contains that text. It's not as safe. This is still not a very good set of rules for a password in general, but it's good enough for our function examples. So no username that cannot be contained anywhere in the string in the middle, the beginning. Also, we need to make sure at least eight characters. So another example would be is valid password, and then if the password was only hello one, that would be false because it's not long enough, as would this because it does not have a space. We don't need to return any specific reason for why it's invalid, so don't return something like password too short. It should be a Boolean true or false. So go ahead and try this if you'd like, pause the video, and then let's write a solution. So I'll start off by defining my function is valid password. Two parameters, the first one will be password, the second one is username. You could do it the other way around if you want, I'm just following the pattern I laid out here, but you just need to make sure you have two parameters and give them meaningful names. So if we're calling this one password, then we better treat it as password. So we have three different things we're checking for. Let's start with the length of the password. So we need a conditional. We need to check if password dot length is greater than or equal to eight. If that's the case, it is valid. So we could write it this way, but it's a little trickier because we need to make sure all of these are valid in order for the whole thing to be valid. So we need all of these to be true in order for us to return true. So I couldn't just say if password dot length is greater than or equal to eight return true because that might work if the password is eight characters like that but one of those characters could be a space, at which point it's invalid. So I need to make sure all of them are true. So I could chain them all together with and. I'm not a fan of this approach for a bunch of pieces together. Like this could get quite long. We have to check if there's spaces. We have to check if there's username, if the username is contained in the password. So I'm gonna reverse my logic and say if password.length is less than eight, return false because only one of these needs to be untrue, needs to be false, in order for the entire password to be invalid. So we'll just check, is it too short? Then we know automatically return false. Then I'll do another one. Are there spaces? So if password, and then how do we check if there is a space in a string or any character in that string? I'll just do index of the space character. And remember index of will give us negative one if that character is not in there. So there's no space in ASDS and I get negative one. So if password.index of is not negative one, that means we have a problem. We want it to be negative one in order for the password to be valid. So we'll return false here. But that means there is a space. And then how do we check if it contains the username? Basically the exact same thing. Password.index of username. So username could be dog lover, and dog lover is contained in this string. We can use index of with multiple characters. I could do ASDS index of ASD, and it tells us it starts at index zero. If I do SDS, it's a terrible string to use, but you can see it starts at index one. So it's not only used for a single character at a time. If this is the case, we will return false. Otherwise, we can return true, and we don't need an else. 
We also don't need to do if and else if, and a, or two else ifs, you could. Uh, but since we're returning, as soon as one of them is true, if this is true, we return, we're done. We don't have to do if and else if. But we'll refactor this in a moment, or we'll talk about a different way of writing this in a moment. But let's just make sure it works. So I'm going to try calling this. Let's do is valid password of something that is too short. So ASD like that, and then some username, it doesn't really matter. We get false. Okay. Now let's do another example where there's a space. It could be, let's do one that's long enough, but there's a space in there, and then some username. We still get false. And now let's do our final test case where we have a long enough password, like chicken1234, and the username is chicken. That's not allowed, so we get false. But if I no longer include chicken in my password, and I instead change it to chicken spelled that way, we finally get true. So we're now meeting the requirements. This is okay, and I, I actually kind of like writing it this way. It's very explicit and clear what's going on. We could write it using a single conditional. It would just get really long. We can link them together and say if one of these is true. So if this or this or this return false. So we could do that. I'll duplicate the function and rewrite it just so you can see what it would look like. So we could rewrite it as if, and then the first thing would be password.length is less than eight, or password.index of uh, space, not empty string, but space, is not equal to negative one, or password.index of username is not equal to negative one. If that's the case, if one of those is true, return false or more if one or more is true and then return true at the end that means everything is valid and this works i would definitely just want to format it like we have here make it easier to see one long line is not so pretty let's make sure it still works let me comment out the original one here refresh and try it again so this one is valid this one contained chicken which is the username so it's invalid this one had a space in it, invalid, and this one was too short, also invalid. So this is also nice, this is not too bad. Another approach you could take, uh, just by the way, if you are bored with this or you feel like you've got a good grasp of it, go ahead and move on. I probably don't even need to tell you that, but I will show you another approach. What we could do is make each of these into a variable. All of these return true or false. So I'm going to get rid of this. I'm just going to delete everything for a moment. And I could make a variable here. What would this be called? Maybe is too short or too short. So const too short equals password.length less than eight. Const, and then this one would be has spaces or has space equals this line. So these variables, I'm making three of them, are going to be true or false Boolean values password.index of username, so we'll call this const, uh, hmm, what's a short way of saying this? Contains username, how about too similar? Like that. And then we can use those to make a conditional. If too short or has space or too similar, return false. And I'll do this on one line, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't need those curly braces. We've seen it once or twice for nice and short conditionals. All we need is one line of code, return false, otherwise return true. Okay, it should still work. That's invalid. This one with a space in it, super long space, still invalid. Let's go with a different username like dog, and then a password that contains dog. I love dog123 still false but now if i change username to be cat password no longer contains it it's true and we've got yet another thing that we could change and to be clear here i'm not saying that this is the best evolution or that this version will be the better version i just want to explore some possibilities here so what we're doing right now is checking a bunch of conditions well it's a single condition that contains a couple of ors and if this is true 
we return false. If it's not true, we return true. So we want this to be false so that we return true, if that makes sense. So we could invert this. Instead of saying if it's too short or it has spaces or it's too similar to username, return false, we could say if it's not too short, if it doesn't have space, and it's not too similar, return true. And we could write that like this. Function is valid password. We can keep these variables, but remember, anytime I have a variable here, you could just replace it with a condition. So we could say if it's not too short and does not have space and it's not too similar, we want to return true. Otherwise, return false. And it should still work fine if I refresh over there. This one is valid, but if I now change this to be love as my username, it's false. If I just change the username to something and I add a space, false. And if the password is too short, we get false. Okay, now this also is good, but we can improve it even one more degree. I shouldn't say improve, but we can shorten it if you wanted to. We're saying if this is true, return true. If this is false, return false. We could just say return this. This evaluates to true or false. So I could get rid of that. Return this. This whole thing will evaluate to true or false, and then we return that value. So that's false. Let's do a longer one. That's true because it does not contain this username. I add a space. We've seen this a bunch of times by now. The logic still works. And I'll stop here. We could continue to flip flop and change the type of logic we're doing. We could, instead of making a variable called too short and checking if the password is too short, we could go the other way around and check, is this password long enough? In which case we'd be checking password.length greater than or equal to eight. And then we could change our logic down here. The point is we could continue to alter the logic. Um, I'm not going to stress about it. Looking at all of them, I think any of them is, is good. Even this first one, which is a lot longer in terms of the number of lines, it's still very easy to see what's going on. A lot of people obsess, especially students uh, who are starting out obsessed with writing compact, super short, one-liner functions and really trying to do like hacky, cool things. And that's great. It's always fun to see how short you can make something. But often that comes at the expense of readability and expressiveness, just being able to understand it. If someone walked into this code or walked into this file and needed to understand what was going on, all of these are pretty clear. And these in particular, I like with these variables. Um, some people would say, as you don't need those variables, you're wasting memory. It's really a minuscule waste of memory, if you want to call it that, and it's not worth stressing about. But pick whichever one you're comfortable with. I just wanted to show a couple different versions.